The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may contain income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Welcome, welcome everyone. I see everyone is filing into the room. This is so fun. We love our Wednesday night calls and I am Amber Smithson and I'm a certified Optavia coach and I have with me co-hosting tonight the lovely Brittany Whitworth. Say hello, Brittany. Hey, hey everyone. It is awesome to be on. Amber, thank you for the opportunity to share about this awesome topic. Great. So tonight, a lot of you are, are joining us. Maybe this is your very first Habits of Health call. And you might be joining us live on Zoom webinar. You might be joining us via our YouTube channel or our podcast playback. So however you found us, we're glad that you did. We have all kinds of people who join us on these calls. We have clients of our program. We have coaches of our program, health professionals, or sometimes just people who are checking us out and saying, what's up to be all about? So no matter who you are, we are glad that you're joining us to just increase the health level in your life just that much more and plugging into the Optavia community. Also, you may be in a different phase of your health journey. You may be in the weight loss phase doing one of our programs like five and one, you may be in transition, you may be in optimization phase. So no matter where you are, then just make sure if you have any questions that you connect up with your health coach and um, with your Optavia coach. So let's go ahead and get started because we are so excited about tonight's topic, which is element 14, transitioning to eating healthy for life. And I love this topic because really this affects everybody. At some point, you may either have to transition from a weight loss phase or help somebody else do it if you are a coach. So in this element, we're gonna talk a little bit about just going from that phase one, that weight loss phase to phase two, just focusing on learning how to eat healthy for life. We're going to empower you to make choices that will support long-term weight management and help you generate optimal health and weight well-being and also help you create a transition plan that works for you because it's not one size fits all. So some of the things I want you to keep in mind. The first thing is if you are not currently ready to transition, I don't want you to tune us out. <laughs> Because it, this is such good information, including information that will just be good for overall health. So the first thing you're going to want to do, connect with your coach and make a plan. And it's really helpful to know your goal. We're going to talk a little bit about knowing your goal a little more in, in a minute. But knowing your activity level, not overestimating or underestimating your activity level is super important and realizing that your transition is going to require fueling. So you've gotten to this goal weight, you're feeling great, you're ready to start transitioning. Don't just cancel your order. You're going to want to make sure you have plenty of fuelings on hand. So Brittany, I would love for you to maybe help everyone on the, on the call tonight understand a little bit more about the different phases of our health program in general. Yes, and this diagram is so fantastic because it, I think we can all relate. 
And for those of you that are on, on live right now, please drop in the chat, where are you um, in your journey? You know, I started this and I'll share my story in a minute, but I was up there at the top and it was so great to know that this was just not a one or two step process because everything I had done before, it really was. And the majority, wow, <laughs> many folks are in phase one. And I have to say, congratulations that you're in phase one. This is giving me just goosebumps seeing all the people that are moving forward in their health, lots in two, lots in three. And then I'm in three now, and I feel so incredibly blessed to be there. But if we take a moment to really look at this and appreciate the process that happens, because this is a process. And when you have dove in with your coach and you have raised your hand and said, my fundamental choice is long-term health, you're walking through these stages and there's so much to be learned along the way and what i really want you to look at is that phase two for many of us the desire to lose weight has been something that has been on our heart for so long the fact that we even shed a few pounds gets us pretty excited um, but then when we can actually start to dream about a healthy weight what does that really mean and what does that really look like and the beautiful thing about the habits of health and what we learn in the habits of health and in our life book is what Dr. Anderson has spelled out for this. We're really looking at our BMI, but that's not all. We're looking at our body fat percentages and we're looking at our waist circumference. And those are really important things. Your health coach has probably said, what's your starting weight, but there's more. What's your BMI? What are your measurements? And has encouraged you to write those things down. One of the things that is my current goal, because I'm at an ultra healthy BMI and I'm at a healthy waist circumference, but I'm, I mean, I'm, a, I'm at a healthy body fat percentage, but I wanna to get to a healthier body fat percentage. I wanna get more lean. And for me, when I look at this, that optimization is about taking my body fat percentage to that new level. And so these are some great um, factors that we can really consider for our long-term health. And when we have those three things in check, we have reduced our risk for long-term problems with our health significantly. So those are some great factors. And I know <laughs> the first time I looked at the BMI scale, I thought, there's no way. Ultra health what? I just wanna be in the green zone. And I got to the green zone and then I felt so good and so empowered. Why not go past that? And so that healthy weight changed for me and I went down to a 2021 BMI. And who would have thought that in my 40s, I could be back to my high school weight, but it's possible. And now I'm strengthening and adding on. That's that optimization phase. And even moving in for me to the longevity because I, I, I've got big plans. I'm gonna be someone who's doing a lot in my 80s and 90s. So this is just an awesome chart. And I love that you all took the time to say where you are. And I love that in the chat, people are putting down their BMI and their body fat and um, getting to the gym or finding a place that can help you get those measurements is awesome. And it just takes it to a whole nother level. So this chart is just super empowering. I love that, Brittany. You know, and there was some questions like, how do we find our waist circumference? And how do we find our body fat percentage? And the cool thing is, is there's so many resources out there um, you, most gyms or doctor's offices, or I just bought one of those handheld things on Amazon, honestly. Yes. <laughs> I think it's so fun to track your body fat percentage and waist circumference. Just get an old fashioned tape measure. See where your waist is at. And for males, you want to be under that 37 inches. For females, under that 31 and a half. And it's just another risk factor. We're not telling anyone how much they should weigh or what they, their goal should be. What we're saying is as you reach and near these numbers, then your risk for disease goes down. It's just the, the statistics. It's just the science behind it. So going back to you, Brittany, why don't you share with us a little bit about your story and journey with Optivia? Well, I certainly would not have thought that looking at all of those other numbers would be something for me. Um, but it really became the case after I, I clued into the fact that this was more than a diet. So you can see there in front of you, um, that is my transformation. So on my left, there on the left, um, that was me at age 38. My son, Zeke, had just been born. 
Um, I am um, a mom who has been um, just incredibly grateful for my three children who came to me by way of adoption. But here's the crazy thing. That picture on the left, y'all, those were elastic shorts. And to me, when I started this journey, it was like, I'm, I just don't want a muffin top anymore. I just don't want, you know, elastic shorts anymore. And when it really hit me, um, Zeke was three in that, or three days old. I know I'm crazy. Mom with three, with three day old kiddo at Disney, Disney World, but he was born in Florida and we live in Colorado. And so here we are and I'm having fun and I feel amazing because it was such a blessing. But a few days later when all the hype of Disney World left and we were just trying to make our way back home with adoption paperwork, it hit me. I am 38 years old. I was just incredibly blessed for this sweet boy to come my way. And I have three chronic illnesses. I've been diagnosed with anti-cardiolapid antibody syndrome, what? Blood clot disorder, and polycystic ovaries, and lupus. And I'm sitting here there holding him, and I'm wearing elastic pants because the buttons are too tight on all of my shorts. And I'm wearing pants in Florida, and I knew something had to change. I wanted to be my best for this sweet boy. I wanted to be there for the long haul. And so I saw an infomercial on TV, wasn't Optavia, ordered it, got started, was really frustrated for a year. And then my incredible coach was posting about her journey. And I'm so grateful for my coach, Julie. And if you would just shout out in, in, either, in either your head, if you're watching this after the fact, to your coach or drop in the chat your coach's name with a little bit of love, because I'm so glad she was bold enough to be transparent and share her journey, because then I raised my hand and said, if she can do it, I can too. And y'all, I got started and it worked. Oh my goodness, it actually worked. And I started feeling good and I started gaining hope. And that desire to get back in pants and it not hurt to button them changed. <laughs> and it was like, hey, I think I'll create ultra health. And then it became, hey, whatever these books are and whatever these calls are that my coach keeps encouraging me to hop on, I think I'm going to because I really want to do well at this and I want to be healthy for the long term. And so my choice switched from a diet and getting rid of a muffin top to health is a fundamental choice. And I'm so glad it did because now I have confidence for the future and I'm so grateful for all that I've learned in the process of this journey. Wow, Brittany, oh my goodness. It's so inspiring. You know, we love to bring people on, real people onto these calls to share their story of health and hope because you can do that too. You can focus on what you want to create and you can have that optimal health and well-being. And so let's talk a little bit more about transition. So whenever we start something new, it's always a good idea to have a strategy and to kind of like give yourself a little bit of a framework. And if you are in the five and one, if you're in weight loss right now in that phase, then how great is it that you're on this call and you are thinking ahead to the future and saying, okay, what do I need to know? What do I need to get ready for so that you are going to set yourself up for success? So we're going to talk about two things here. Number one, controlling your insulin pump. And number two, um, determining your, your total energy expenditures, the calories in, calories out. Because what I found is when people only focus on, on calories in, calories out, and they ignore the whole insulin pump and blood sugar <laughs> just strategy, they, they don't do as well. So we want to equip you with both of these. So number one, controlling your insulin pump. So there was a study done by um, Dr. Jenkins at the University of Toronto, and he is the pioneer in glycemic index and in glycemic food. And so this is what he did. He took two groups of people, and one of the groups um, ate you know, a certain number of calories, a certain number of foods, but they ate it just traditionally how Americans eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then he took another group, same number of calories, same foods as the first group, but he said, let's break it up into six small meals a day. Let's see what happens. And this is what happened. The group that ate six times a day, they lost more wheat. They reportedly were less hungry. They lowered their cholesterol by 15% and they lowered their blood insulin levels by 28%. Okay, this is important for transition because 
if you've been doing five and one weight loss phase, you have already been doing this just because that's how our plan is set up. You're eating six times a day. You're fueling your body throughout the day, every two to three hours. You are already um, protein carb balancing. You just didn't even know it maybe. <laughs> and so as we move into the next phase, we want to make sure you're being mindful of this. We want to keep your baseline insulin and glucose in your, we don't want big spikes and dips. We want you to stay right at baseline by following the six small meals a day um, basics. And the other side of this is choosing low glycemic foods. Now your fuelings and your lean and green are just low, they are low glycemic by design. That is why we utilize those in weight loss phase because it sets your body up for best success to get into that best fat burn, protect your lean muscles. So as we go into transition, we want to be conscious of this. And you can download all these charts on habitsofhealth.com or you can find them in your Habits of Health book. So ask your coach for those references to help you find these things. But I just want to point out a few things here is that the high glycemic um, vegetables on this chart, like peas, potatoes, corn, beets, these sorts of things, these are the things that we're not doing in weight loss phase because it can spike and dip our blood sugars, which isn't conducive for our weight loss phase. So as we go into transition, some people say, well, am I never going to be able to eat cooked carrots again? <laughs> Don't worry, you can eat cooked carrots. Um, that's okay. But what we want to do is have a strategy around any time we're eating higher glycemic foods. So like your fruit choices, there's, we want to incorporate these fruits and, and even start your vegetables and we can incorporate these things back into our eating diet, but we just want to be smart about it. When we, when we choose a higher glycemic choice, we want to make sure that we pair that with a protein. So it's keeping our blood sugar steady and even make sure we're eating smaller amounts. So all these principles that you're learning during your five in one phase. So even with our cereals, breads, pastas, our carbs, just being mindful of choosing our very best choices each time. Okay, so let's go into our total energy expenditure. Now, if you are a math nerd like me, then this would be super fun for you to do all the math and get out your calculator and figure this stuff out. But we want to keep it at a, you know, understandable level for everybody. Um, not all of us enjoy doing long division and things like that. So your, your total energy expenditure has a couple of things, factors that determines it. The first thing is your basal metabolic rate. This is just like when you're laying and sleeping and doing nothing, your body is burning a certain number of calories. Then you add into that your physical activity level or your PAL. And this is, you know, the, you're going to the gym, you're walking, you're playing sports, you're expending some extra calories that we want to account for when we're figuring out how many calories that you want to be eating. And then there's also the thermic uh, effect of food that you eat. Okay, so how do we calculate this? So the short answer is go to optavia.com and go to the drop down for the three and three and there's a calculator on there <laughs> you can enter in all of your stuff but this is another way you can do it just take your current weight in pounds times 11 calories or times 11 basically and that will give you um your amount that you then need to multiply by your activity level so this is what i suggest to people when they are figuring this out don't overestimate your exercise. <laughs> Sometimes we think we are really cool and we're killing it at the gym and maybe we're not burning as many calories as we think. So better to figure a little lower, say, let's just see what it is for light exercise or sedentary and go from there. And that's gonna set you up um, for the best success just at the beginning. Okay, so Brittany, do you want to take this next part and just give them a little bit of insight on how we're going to be adding in these different food groups that we have, you know, kind of been holding back for a while on the five and one. Yeah, and you know, I think so many of us, we're really curious when we start the five and one, why can I not eat some of these things? And it's just what Amber shared with us a minute ago. 
we're helping our insulin pump, we're learning to control those things. And in the process, so much of the guesswork is just taken up off of your plate, it's all done for you. And so when you get to transition, which congratulations y'all, to get to this point in your journey is huge. And I have clients ask all the time about this part of your journey. So if you're not there yet, congratulations that you're empowering yourself by being on. This is what it's going to look like. This information is in your Optavia guide um, and, and it's there for you to always know what to do. So that first week, you're gonna be adding in vegetables. That's it. It's going to be the same, but you'll be adding in some extra vegetables, one cup there. Um, and you know, you've learned so much too, as you've gone through and hopefully you've made your way into the book and the life book where you've seen those color coded charts um, in your habits of health book. Those are in 2.5 and it shows all those beautiful pictures that Amber just showed. So you have those there with you. So that first week you're picking a vegetable to add in week two, you're going to be adding in fruit. Yes, hello, the fruit comes back. Um, and my goodness, I was shocked to learn um, about some of the fruits and how high they were. And the cool thing is, is with someone who also wants to control inflammation, I got very curious about these color-coded charts and it really empowered me because we all want to be empowered to, to, to do our own thing and to learn ourselves. But seeing those charts empowered me to take it a step further and become more curious about what are the best things for um, non-inflammatory type foods? So all of this information you're learning and acquiring, you're gonna keep moving forward and forward. And then week three, you're going to be adding in dairy again. Um, and you might find as you're adding some of these things in, if you're like me, dairy didn't serve me well anymore. And um, so this process allows you to slowly increase your calories and introduce some of these foods that you've not been eating um, and, and see how your body responds. So you're building up the caloric intake again, but you're also seeing how you respond to these food groups. So that's week three. And then depending on your range of weight loss, working with your coach and reading in the book, weeks four to six, you're going to be adding in another serving of grains. Now, the other thing you're going to be doing if you look closely at this chart um, is you'll be uh, decreasing your fueling. So week two, you're dropping down to four. Um, week three, you're staying at four. And then weeks four to six, you've gone down to three. So when Amber mentioned at the start of the call, don't cancel your Optivia Premier. Keep that going because you're gonna be using these fuelings. And what a great gift, because again, the guesswork is, is, is not a big thing. All you're needing to do is work on that addition and then slowly dropping the fueling. So again, it's all there for you. Um, and you'll be learning and studying and empowering yourself such that when you get to the end of week four or six, you've done it and you've transitioned and now you really know how your body responds and then you've got your TEE there waiting for you. I love that, Brittany. And you know, sometimes we think, oh no, there's all these things I'm adding and subtracting. Honestly, what if you just made it really simple and in week two, you added like some fruit to your vanilla shake? And then in week three, instead of making it with water, you made it with milk or coconut milk or <laughs> one of those dairy options. Like, how simple is that? Like, don't overthink this, you guys. It, it, it could be very straightforward and simple. So let's say you are one of those people who are like, okay, that's all fine and great, but then I don't know what to do after that four to six week after the grains, and I need... I need it to be listed out for me because <laughs> I know I've had lots of clients over the years who have been like that. So I wanted to show you one of the resources that Nutrition Support has put out for us that I think is absolutely fantastic. So they have sample meal plans from 1200 calories all the way up to, I don't even know, lots of calories. <laughs> and then they have the healthy exchange list. So I'm going to show you this. So that you can see how amazing it is and how simple it can be. So here is the sample meal plans. So let's say that I actually figured mine out earlier for when I'm sedentary to light exercise and I'm supposed to be at 1900 calories. So you'll see there's one for each calorie level. I'm going to go and scroll down to 1900. Okay, so this would be my calorie sample meal plan. And it kind of just lines it out for you in a really simple and straightforward way, exactly what to do. So breakfast, it gives you both a 
example and to the right it gives you um, the exchange and I'm going to show you the cheat sheet for the exchanges so a starch a dairy and a fruit so you'll notice the dairy is a protein there you go you have carbohydrates you have proteins and you have fats and then a mid-morning a fueling at lunch you have protein, you have a dairy, you have a starch, a fat, and a fruit. So you kind of have like this really nice um, salad with grilled chicken, and you could have a slice of toast. And, you know, it's really awesome how they put this together. And let me show you the cheat sheet for the exchanges. So, and you can find all this on answers.optavia.com and just type in transition, and you're going to find all these things. <laughs> So it, it tells you exactly, okay, chopped fresh fruit, that's a half a cup, that's one fruit exchange. A dairy is a cup of milk or um, two thirds cup of nonfat yogurt, including Greek yogurt. And it gives you tips like um, choose unsweetened milk substitutes with less sugar. It tells you for proteins, what beef jerky would be or cheese or eggs or cottage cheese. And it's giving you all these ideas of really healthy things that you can incorporate into your long-term plan too. So I just wanted to share that um, and show you guys that even if you're the type of person who needs it all lined out, we have you covered. <laughs> and if you're the type who's a little more loosey-goosey, just remember the principles that you have been learning and you are going to be good to go. So let's keep going here. And these are those links. But again, answers.optavia.com, search sample meal plans or healthy exchange list, and these are going to pop up for you. Honestly, if you Googled that and added an Optavia, you're probably going to find it too. So let's talk a little bit. We're, we're winding our call down. We have a few more minutes, but I just want to give you some reminders here. The principles remain the same. Okay, so just remember, these are things you have been learning in your five-in-one weight loss phase the entire time. Eat your breakfast within an hour of waking up. Get that metabolism going. Fuel every two to three hours. Whenever you eat carbs, eat some protein. I'm going to keep that blood sugar steady and even, both with timing and with combination. Drink your water. Move your body. Being mindful. Working on that mindset. All of these things, they're exactly the same for transition. You just get to add in some fruit or a sweet potato or some yogurt into your shake. Like, it's really simple, you guys. So just to wrap us up, Brittany, maybe we can, you can, you can bring us home and maybe bring on a client and, and get some more insight before we, we close. I would love to. And you all, as you are going through the elements of your life book, your coach is going to be doing this, this, doing this with you also. So I just encourage you to always let your coach know when they call to check in, hey, coach, I'm on Element. 14. So I have an amazing client and Sandra Van Winkle is going to hop on. And Sandra, I am so excited to hear now that you've learned about transition and element 14, what does this element mean to you now? So what it really means to me as a client that is in optimization at this point is really going back and, and thinking about the piece of, of things where um, I'm looking at that insulin pump and am I making choices that I am um, keeping that blood sugar in the insulin level stable and just being really more cognizant of um, you know what kind of glycemic choices I'm making when I'm, I'm making those food choices. Wow, how empowering for your long-term health. And when you think about this element, what is it giving you the opportunity to reflect on? Well, I absolutely love what Amber said about your activity level. And so um, I think that what it gives me the opportunity to reflect on is, am I truly gauging that correctly? Like, am I looking at that in a way that I'm setting myself up for success as I'm optimizing my health? especially because you're training for a half marathon right now, right? Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Congratulations on that. And then when you think about moving forward, what actions are you going to take now that you have this awesome, empowering information from Element 14 on transition? So one of the things that I want to commit to after listening to this call is really journaling um, what I'm eating and evaluating how many of those choices am I making 
that are in those the green levels on the low glycemic taking it to another level i know i've made so many good choices and created a lot of, of awesome habits but i'm excited to be able to really evaluate um on my meal plan what what does that look like so i'm going to do a little journaling coach and i will send that over to you hey hey great job <laughs> I love that ladies. Sandra, I think those were really great takeaways. And I think a lot of people who are on live or listening to playback can really resonate with that and kind of formulate some of your own takeaways that you can share with your coach um, moving forward. So just as a reminder, you can go to YouTube and our Lifebook element videos are on our Optivia YouTube playlist. And each of these elements that we are going through has a video that you can watch to get some more information and some more support about it. And I want you to join us next week because we're going to be going through element 15, which is how to eat healthy for life. And some of these things that we explore just a tiny little bit to remind you for transition are going to be explained in detail next week. So I know some of the people in the chat were like, I'm nervous. I don't know what, I don't nervous about transition. I'm nervous about optimizing my health and going out of that weight loss phase. You are going to want to join us next week so that you can really get that handle on what it's going to look like for that long term. So thank you so much for joining us and we hope that you have a fabulous week. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may have contained income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia income disclosure statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optivia team.